the Bill Malcolm is podcast, the show where we look at movies we love. Break them apart to find out what gives them their sweet riff magic. I'm your host, Josh Griffey, joined as always by my friend and co host, the riddle of the Alex Dandino. All right, I'm going to put away my props or I'll never get through this show. <laughs> We're kind of the podcast carrot tops here. We love a good prop bit. Uh, welcome to the show, guys. If we could get to some business before we start off the exciting pod joins a band month. Uh, we've been really looking forward to this one. But a couple notes, a uh, little business. Guys, please take a second right now. Uh, please leave us a rating and review wherever you find the show, especially if that happens to be Apple Podcast app. That's how we fight back against the oppressive overlords that make us wipe our makeup off and don't understand us and our art uh please go to youtube subscribe to our channel film alchemist over there you can usually find video versions of these podcasts and some other cool stuff we're working on over there like our demos (laughs) like our sick demos and our sweet vhs uh videos sweet (laughs) uh also guys you can email the show film alchemist pod at gmail.com or find us on all the socials you're on. It's a great way to let us know movies you'd like to hear us cover. Uh, be they new, old, double feature, theme for a whole month, guest host. Whatever you guys want to hear us talk about, that's what we would like to do for you as best as we can. I do keep a master list of all the suggestions you guys give us. So I hear them, I read them, so keep them coming. Thank you guys for all that you do for us. All right. All right. That's enough business. It's all grown-up stuff this month. No, just kidding. We're joining a band this month. The pod joins a band. So all movies about that glorious time, that glorious moment when you and your friends say, to hell with this world. We're going to conquer it one chord at a time, one gig at a time. Um, We're joining a band. So today's film is not only my favorite movie we'll cover this month, Probably my favorite movie of the 2010s. And I think one of the most underappreciated movies I've ever seen. Sing Street. Um, This movie had a very special place in my heart, too. This was the first movie I saw after my first son was born. So we got back from the hospital. My mother-in-law was there, and I just needed to get out of the house. They had it on lockdown. I was just getting in the way. My first movie back was Sing Street. And what a movie to see when you're at that seminal, life-changing moment. Where I was watching, I was like, oh, my God, I'm not a kid anymore. I'm a, I'm like a grown-up now. I got responsibilities and shit. I have one of these rebellious teenage rockers. I have one now. <laughs> um, and I loved it then. But I was telling Alex, and I'm, I'm unashamed to say it, I'm trying my best to not tear up on the pod. Uh, those of you who know me, I am a prolific movie crier. It would be more apt to say I'm a movie weeper. <laughs> like a full-on tear show. And I probably cried for about 70% of this movie today. Um, It just hit me where I live, man. And I was telling you, Alex, I think this is the best that movies have to offer it. It is joy. It's happy, sad, right? It's all the stuff they talk about. But more than anything, this movie just captures that energy of that time when the world is yours to conquer. And it it made me want to live better. It makes me want to just be happy that I exist and can live in a world that this movie, I mean, it really is one of those rare movies that I walk away still buzzing for days after I watch it. Alex opening thoughts on sing street. I mean, you just feel so much better after you watch the movie. Like I honestly, (laughs) like it's one of those things that just takes you back to a time when you're like, wow, I had like, I got out, you know, I think we all have had those rough weeks. We've all had those rough days. And like, it's one of those things where it just takes you back to that time where you were like just making stuff with friends because that was the thing you felt you needed to do at the time. Like I, it was, it hit me where I live, man. Like you said, like I was, I was emotional the entire movie. And especially when they started like making music videos and like playing music together, like we'll get into it. But honestly, like it was just, this is beautiful, man. Like it's hard. Yeah. It's hard to say it. This just like, it's going to be one of those shows where we just gush the entire time. Like, I'm not sure I have anything. There's nothing I would change about this movie. It is definitely yeah. one. Of, it's one of my <laughs> top. I can say this 
because it's hard for me to determine like my favorite movie. Like people always ask, what's your favorite movie you've ever seen? I'm like, I, that's a weird question. Like that's besides Highlander. It's tough. Yes. <laughs> but like <laughs> this, if someone asked me what my favorite movie was, I'd say, I don't really know if I have a favorite movie. I'm like, you know, a movie that I love unabashedly without any provocation or shame is Sing Street. Like this is yeah. easily one of those. Yeah. I say it as, you can make a movie as good but not better than Sing Street to me. To me, this movie Agreed. is perfection in its own way. Because, again, it I think the best movies, they just they profoundly move you. And yes. this one does, but it's not. It's I love it because it captures that age so well where there's nothing profound about this movie. It's not a big life or death thing. It's not like, you know the fate well, of a society, about, but what it captures, ride, man. yeah, it captures this time where he's old enough. Our, our main character, right. Is old enough now where he starts to see the divide is that it's the end of the childhood time and you're transitioning into being adult. And the movie takes place in this time where it's, it's a brilliant balancing act of him going out and his, his war in this movie, right. Is to get the girl. It's all about the girl, right. The classic, as it always out. is when you decide to join. As band. it always, my band was the exact opposite. My band, we used to debate about names, uh, toxic culture or fates fallen, <laughs> and we were almost exclusively uh, drying people out music. Right, like if you heard our band play, there was no wop, there was no sexiness, there was no dancing. It was just don't I mean, kid twelve angry men could have been the name. Don't of kid our yourself, band. Griff. Don't kid yourself. <laughs> that band was all about meeting girls but it wasn't i'm telling you for a fact but in our minds we're like well once we're on like you know the main stage of Ozfest, i'm sure there will be you know tons of ladies but as yeah those was, are the ladies you want too you know yeah <laughs> main I mean, stage we, Ozfesters. <laughs> we're like who's hitting the keg for the third guy hitting the keg? we were like that kind of band but anywho it was still fun though but i remember the, the weird setups and the trying and you know, going to bed at night and not being able to sleep because you, you have ideas for the song. Oh, I should have added this on the drums or it's. But you you pair that with you watch this actual family disintegrating. Yeah. And so the movie's always pulling us back into this harsh reality. And I think that juxtaposition is what is so be it reminds us why we human and why we adult is because those small moments, right? where they're able to pull away and watching the journey of these guys start to take authorship of the world as they want it to be instead of this seeming shit sandwich that everyone else around them is dealing with. I mean, that's, that's what we all hope to find. Right. I mean, that's what you strive for your entire life. I don't know anybody who wants to live in the muck and mire. Like it's, I have friends, you know, I have friends who play in bands still, and I have friends who tour relentlessly, or at least they did before pandemic times. But like, it's one of those things where like, yeah, it's just about whatever you're feeling, man. Like, it's about expressing that in a way that is not like, as we find out, you're either a bouncer or you're a, <laughs> or you're in the band, you know, like it's. <laughs> It's indescribable, honestly. Like, I think that's a really important thing about – this is really the fascinating thing. This is John Carney direct, wrote and directed. John Carney did Once as well, which is another fabulous movie. But, um, like, I've never felt I, – I, I've never felt close enough to feeling that way again since I was in high school. Like, being in bands in high school and, like, being in a band and, like, having – my friend who I wrote songs with and that kind of stuff. That's the closest I've felt to that beat in a long time. And like the closest I've felt to someone capturing how that feels when you're like working on a song and you feel like it's electric a little bit. And like, you're kind of like getting this down and like going back and forth. And that's, it's again, like it's the only time I've ever seen anything like it. And like, honestly, like it got me very emotional. Like there's just yeah, a lot well about, there's a scene in the movie that just got me very differently today, right? And it's when Connor and his older brother are sitting on the stairs and he's like, look at her. And the mom's outside smoking on the back porch. Mm -hmm. And he's like, she brushes home every day so she can catch that last 30 minutes of sunlight. You know, that's like her happy place. That's what she gets in this life. Yeah. 
And as we see, right, there's economic collapse. They're pulling him out of his posh school affairs, marriage collapse, all these, you know, fucking horrible real world things. But I so related to that moment of that mom, right, where it's just like, fuck you guys. This is one thing. This is all I fucking get, man. And I think, sadly, so many of us set our lives up to where we just get that 30 minutes of sunlight and that keeps us through the slog. Yeah. And the other trick of this movie is that it ends before we see the inevitable, right? We right. can't watch Connor go to London and fail and be homeless and come back and work as a, you know, mechanic. We have Aww. to leave it off on this. And that's the, but that's, that's how we want it, right? We yeah. want to be like his brother I mean, again, cheering because someone's like, trying. This is the idealized version of what all of us have been through. Like anyone who's ever suffered or gone forth in a creative endeavor this is what you do like you go to the ends of the earth to make that work and that i think is probably like the most thrilling thing about the movie is how like the lengths you go to and the feelings that you take with you and like all this emotional weight that you carry with you into your songs also has to be what you put out into the world and like what you have to do for your art and like yeah I don't want to see anything about how hard it is for him to like get his demo tape to the big label. <laughs> like I don't need sing street too. What I need is to feel like I'm living in that moment where they're playing drive it. Like you stole it. Like that's yeah. That's, that's the vibe. man. That's what I love the fucking start of this too. Cause it starts with the backdrop of, you know, economic collapse, people moving to London, homeless. Uh, mm-hmm. The parents are just screaming bloody murder. Right. And you just see this kid just dinking on his guitar, repeating what his parents are screaming at each other, right? Yep. That in that moment, that's the lovely thing, right? Because, you know, the art that I pursue is filmmaking and screenwriting. And it's it's hard because it's so solitary and long scale, right? Like the long game on writing a script to like when you can enjoy that with an audience, if ever, you know is a long way down the road. The beautiful thing about that guitar is it it is this instant dimensional machine. Right. You can just sit down and be somewhere else better in your head. You can create so there's an immediacy to music and a magic to music that affects people so differently. And I love that just showing us that right off the bat. Right. Mm -hmm. And as we start to meet the family and the scene today that another one that really caught me was Connor's, first walk to the new school right and he's just looking at you know fighting and a kid throws a fucking rat at him right and you just you see how small and slumped scared he is and watching him through the movie because this is another thing is that a lot of these movies american movies at least Mm -hmm. would have this character and it'd be like a classic michael Sarah role yeah like he's super shy and then he meets the girl and she kind of pulls him through the adventure well like the alternate version is it was Nick and Nora. Yeah, like, Nick and Nora, something like that. But what I love about this is we see Connor get punched and bullied and, you know, all these fucked up things. But when he sees the girl on the porch, this is an important scene in the movie. He is the one who walks over and takes his fucking shot, man. Mm-hmm. And even her, she can see that, that thing, that this is a guy who's willing to try to make this better. Right. And I, I love that moment because I think I had kind of washed that out of my mind a little bit, right? That he he had this in the movie. He always defaults to going for it. And it's fucking refreshing, man. The older I get, I can only imagine that I will either yeah. appreciate it or be annoyed by it. I can't. I, tell. <laughs> I legitimately like watching those scenes like I wished that I had been that like for like out like outgoing like music was always an outlet for me but like i wished i had been able to do that kind of thing like it was very hard for me even like when you're in bands and stuff like that it's still hard for you to like describe the way you feel so like that outgoingness that connor's willing to put willing to put out there the things that he's willing to say just alone say like i'm in a band we're gonna go make a music video like it's it's indescribably awesome because you're just like, God, I wish I was that. I wish well, I was that. That's the wish fulfillment, right? Is that yeah. he's the kid that while things are getting bad and yeah, he doesn't have it as bad as almost anyone else in the film. Right. No. But 
they're rough, man. And I think that's another thing this movie captures is how when you're that age, everything is a Titanic endeavor, yeah. right? Finding that girl, the way he talks about her, right? Like, I, I feel like it's hard, too, because, you know, I've been with my wife for so long and we've been married for a while. And, you know, we dated other people, but I think you you forget how it was when you first see her. When you yeah. walk into the room and you fucking hit a w- invisible wall, like you're some kind of fucking horny mime. You're like, oh, <laughs> right. And you can't <laughs> breathe. And you're just like her. That's that's my life. That's my fucking. And it's it's it, but that's how it is when you're that young. Right. Everything, everything you look at, because that's I mean, I, I love that part, too. He talks about in the riddle of the model with her dangerous eyes. Right. How you see someone and you you write this future on them. Yeah. And as you get to know, it's never that. But I was like, that's what it's like to be a teenager, especially a teenager who has the audacity, the fucking balls. Something I'll never forget as long as I live. And I know he doesn't listen to this podcast, but my father was one of those like basketball, football coaches of a dad where all he did was try to break my soul and spirit. Right. You'll never be anything. You can't make it have a backup plan. Cause I think in his mind, he thought he would neg me to be the best version of something. And it's, it's fucking brutal, man. Like it, it always was really hard. My mother was always super supportive. Right. Right. But you know, when someone in your own house is telling you, you can't make it, then you go out and we, you know, we went to film school and everyone's competing. We moved to LA. It's, it's always this fucking struggle. Right. So mm-hmm. the audacity of these kids that like with our little fucking tunes, we like think about the audacity of when he walks up to the girl, he thinks is a model. And he's like, yeah, we need, you know, we need you for a band. You know, we got a video. He walks back to his friend, the first friend he made. And I love that line. He's like, we got to start a band. <laughs> like, we got to do it. They don't even have a band. They don't have shit. But he just knows. He's like, this is a ticket to a better yeah. life. Right. It, and if not, I like mean, the big times for right see, now. It's not even like, yeah, like it's not even like ticket to a better life. It's just a ticket for an escape. Like we all know we can go to Eamon's house and play and make music and like be in a band together. And like, we're like, I love the recruiting, the band recruiting scenes. Yeah. Like those are just like, those are great. And that, I mean, all those things you do, like, first off, I wish that the bands I was in when I was in like middle school and high school, I wish we were nearly as good the first time. And we just sounded are. great across like four genre. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like <laughs> the minute riddle of the r- minute riddle of a model came out, I was like, dude, why? weren't we awesome like this? Our original sucked. Like it took me like, it took me like three years and like two different (laughs) bands to be like good and like put out like records and stuff like that. And I was like, Jesus Christ, these kids are amazing already. I'm so jealous. Oh, we never even gigged. Like I did. I played one live gig. My dude, no one wanted the fucking, we could have called ourselves Slipknots, but only if we handed out fucking rope for people to choke themselves (laughs) out. So they didn't have to hear our sets anymore. That's how bad we were. Oh, Come on. We were, be- but again, we had fun. Like, I remember I used to have to, because I was the drummer, and then my friend's kid brother could drum. So he took over, and I was the bass player then. So just trying to learn bass by any means I could as fast as possible. And I was the backup, like, screamer, right? We had, like, a weird, like, Lincoln Park thing. So Sick. we had the guy who could sing, and I'd be like, Bleh! but I was so loud, I would fuck up the everything. So I had to sit in a bathroom. And I couldn't have the lighter fan on because it fucked up the electricity of this barn we used to play in. So I would sit in this fucking hot, closed, dark bathroom trying to fucking play bass to a, you know, with a flashlight with my microphone so I could go. Bleh, 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 bleh. <laughs> but it was like, awesome. I look back at it now and the magic of it. Cause I think yeah. the thing that happens to us is That's, it's, it's awesome. Cause it's magical, man. Like yes, making music you forget, with your friends. You forget that you're for a, when you're that age, you don't know yet that you're not supposed to be happy and make it right. I, well, I think that's probably more cynical than some people, but that's how I feel like the you world just is want to play music. <laughs> you're with, you find friends who do like, I can't remember. I think it was maybe Dave Grohl who said it, but like, the best bands are people who are just friends who start playing music together. Like that's the point. Like it's not, you don't get in bands with people who are musicians because let's go, let's go be musicians. Like, that's not what you think is like, we like playing music together. We like writing music together. Let's start a (laughs) band. Like those are the, that's the foundation. Like 
that's the best part about the whole thing is like the way these guys come together is so oddly organic. And it's not even, it's not even a main focus of the movie. Like this is the thing that Sing Street does better than any other fucking movie about bands, music, anything like that is not only is it stay earnest the entire time. Like it gives you this, it's not like hopeful is obviously the way you feel when you're watching it now. Cause like, like, Oh God, those kids, like, they just want to feel something again. But like for me, it feels so it feels so real because the focus is about the girl the focus is about that part of like Connor's story. And it's not about like, oh, there's no trouble with the band when you're starting a band like you're not like the squabbles you would have when you're in a band, especially, um, you know, especially Sing Street themselves, like, there's no squabbles, they're just trying to make music and have fun together, and they're making music videos, I wish my friends were that cool, and would just, like, go out and shoot music videos with Those me and my videos band. reminded me of what we used, we used to just run around with a VHS load camera yep. like that, and it, but see, this is the cool thing, the band formation's a really fun segment of the movie, right, because Connor's this ultra shy, not happy at his home, watching his family disintegrate kid, right, and then we meet the little red haired guy and he kind of sets the tone where he has a business card. He just wrote on his thing and he's like, oh, I don't have a phone, but, you know, I'm around. Yeah, that's aspiration. It is right. That's what he's doing. And then we meet Eamon and his dad was, you know, kind of a failed musician, you know, alcoholics meeting. And his mom mentions, oh, he doesn't really have any friends. Well, now he's a part of some part of something, right? Yeah. And then there's the uh, the only, you know, African-American kid or African English kid. I'm not sure what mm -hmm. the phrase is, but the only, you know, non white kid in this small town. And it's probably nice to not have someone say that. But, oh, that's a member of Sing Street. Right. He's, you know, not like separated out for the difference. Yeah. There's the two little guys who at the start are like, we're not wearing makeup. We're not doing it. And then all of a sudden you see him dancing on a train. So you see these kids find this like mindedness, right? Where they're smoking in the shed. That's another thing that really hit home. They're trying to steal smokes and booze so we could be like a real band, right? Like a real metal head band. Right. And then I love that though, because they come up with their band. They're talking about their band titles when they say Sing Street. Now these five disparate loners characters, they have all their struggles. When they walk out of that shed, it's fucking boss shot, slow motion, arms swinging. They haven't written a song. They haven't done shit. It's the but band. Now they are a band. They yeah. are changed, right? As if they have sold them, their souls to the devil. They are changed, right? They're oh, ready no, for battle. It's, it's not. It's not a devil cell, man. They just decided we're going to be I'm a band. Saying, all they did was just say, "Hey, we're going to get together in in yeah. this kid's fucking, you know, kitchen and play a guitar, or whatever." Mm hmm. But you in that shot, the movie's letting us know visually that this is a big fucking deal, man. When you can just find, and again, I think the band, the music of the movie's so good, right? And it's such a great narrative device. But what it really is is just finding five like-minded people, five people that can just make the world better for you when things are going to shit, man. That's what the movie does really. You watch these kids grow and bond together. And it starts bringing out all the best parts of all of them. I man, that band formation segment is fucking phenomenal. It is, but it, it happens so like matter of factly. Like I like that it's not like it's not this drawn out process. And I think that's a really like <laughs> bands that are friends. Like it's not drawn out. You just go, well, you play that cool. Let's all just be in a band, I guess. Like let's all <laughs> hang out. Like that's what it is. It's not this weird like like audition process you just say you know we're all reasonably talented why don't we play these songs and see what we can do and like that's i mean man like there's no finer bands in the world than that kind of thing like i i, I love that like that segment is yeah just like again pure magic but they're then, they're just these little posers that again but it's it's that's what i think it is is as you get older you're like it's just cute like it's earn it not to like degrade what they did i think sometimes people when you're like oh that's cute you're like that's an insult. It, it's really adorable. Cause you're like, these kids are just posers. Like when he first meets Eamon and he's like, what do you want to play? And he fucking sells his brother's spiel about Duran Duran. Yeah. Right. Trying to make himself sound cooler. Like he knows shit. And then the way they just change their style constantly. Right. 
they're just these little kids reaching out. Right. Mm -hmm. And they, they have that. I love the malleability of kids at that age, right. Where they, they're not these settled things, right. They don't worry about how they have to protect what they are because they don't fucking know, man. And they'll just go for it. Like I remember in high school, just wearing the weirdest shit and trying whatever, you know, it's just, it's, that's, I think that's the cool thing, right. Is it's just adorable to watch these kids fucking swinging for the fence. What was your biggest band fashion faux pas, Griffey? Oh, not in the band. By that phase, I had already locked it down. The hardest part was scheduling the ladies. I was just Stop. crushing. It's like, how am I going to practice this bass? All with the words you're saying are hands? false. Yeah. Oh, you're, my you're hands as are false so as Street. from carrying the weight of the women of the small town. <laughs> That's stupid. That was the hardest part for me. But before that, uh, let's see. I used to do a lot of puka shell necklaces uh, that almost look like chokers. I had a bucket hat. I had a, I had like a Limp Biscuits bucket hat at one point. Nice. Uh, yeah, pretty much. A, I was really a bracelet guy, mm-hmm. but like big, thick leather bracelet guy. Same. So I had a lot. I was a, I was more into accessories than actual fashion, right? Because I was a shorts and t-shirt guy at my core. Mm-hmm. Always have been, but accessories were a big fucking deal for me. <laughs> yeah, I was also a bracelets guy. Yeah, <laughs> I was I was I was I was shirt I was shirt t shirt and jeans, but I was definitely bracelets. Yeah, I mean bracelets you know, and bracelets and puma romas. Oh my god, like. I used to have these giant beads that were like on this flexible scrunchie, and that's what I'd wear around my wrist. And this is how bad I got. I had them on my wrist and my ankles because I thought I looked like the bad guy from fucking Street Fighter Alpha, <laughs> right? Where he had like the four like giant, and then I had this giant bead necklace. Yeah, no, the fucking, what's his name? The red-haired guy who fights, uh, re- anyways, neither here nor there. But yeah, I mean, but that's what I did. I went to school being like, well, God, the hardest part is, did I bring enough condoms for this outfit I brought? You know, like, that's what was going on in my brain. Right. That's how I, like, I remember, like, buying bullet or fake bullet holes for my car, like, awesome, so good. I had a I- fucking zebra seat cover. Like, I was in, like, an ordeal, but that's what it is. You're fucking trying. You're a cover person. Yeah. Right. He, they make fun of cover bands. The teenager, you're a cover person. Yeah. You we make whatever. <laughs> I mean, and that's what it is. Like he keeps Connor keeps changing the person he is to based on what the music is. He listens like all of us went through that. Like mm-hmm. it's so like it's oddly authentic for being like about like constantly changing your evolution, like evolution of your style, of your music, of your tastes. It's so authentic to the experience we all had, which is just like we're. <laughs> all some form of cover band in our lives. Yeah. But again, it feels very real and it feels very authentic because of that, because the honesty this movie plays with is so refreshing and so enriching. And there's nothing that feels like, Oh, we're just doing like eighties be- like, cause there's movies who do eighties because it's the eighties. So it's easy to fuck with. There's nothing about this that feels like, oh, of course it's the 80s because that was like Duran Duran and The Cure and all that shit. And you're like, no, it's because it was Duran Duran and The Fucking Cure. Like (laughs) the real the realness of that. It's not tongue in cheek, right? No, not at all. It's so authentically real. Like, dude, when they hand him when he hands him The Cure record. There's so much about these moments that my I like, favorite band of all time that I had. I had these moments with like my little brother. I had these moments with my friends. Like that was how we communicated was like passing records. And that is like such a real experience for all of us. <laughs> like, again, I, there's just nothing about this movie that feels inauthentic. Like I didn't, I didn't necessarily start playing music in 1985, but I felt like I was there because I remember being in those rooms. I remember being in a basement learning songs. I remember being in a basement playing. I remember being in basements playing shows. Like there's just yeah. all those kinds of things. I remember playing shows at my high school. Like that's, that's what it is, man. And all of it feels real because it all feels like you're on fucking center. Well, it all feels again, like stadium seat. It's because they do such a good job of what they show us between this child journey. Right? Yeah. Which is like there's a great moment when they're the parents are fighting really bad, right? And he goes to Eamon's house. Oh, it's my favorite part of the whole movie. And man. he's just like, What are you doing? Rabbit stiff? 
I haven't said, and they go in song. and he's like, oh, I got these albums like this is kind of the next thing. Watching those two kids sit in that closed room, reading the liner notes, just listening to music, laughing about a rabbit. The band, the way I think back of my days of being in a band. And again, we were like the shittiest band. It was just something to do. But what it was, was it, it was our, our transport to spend more time with people. Yeah. Right. So I wasn't telling my mom, what are you doing? Well, we're going to go fucking smoke pot and talk about the girls we have crushes on. I'm in a band, mom. This is practice. This is business. Someday when I buy you your fourth mansion, you won't you won't be giving me such sass, mom. <laughs> right? like, and that's but it's it's this transport to that because he goes from this sad moment. And in that moment, right, he has something important to work on. And him and Eamon are just laughing about the rabbit shitting on the bed. Yeah. Or when the parents are really going at it and the dad's like, wear this dress. He'll think he's sexy in this. Just talking about their mom getting railed right in front of them. Yeah. Right. And she's like, oh, I'm going to get railed. Right. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm going to go. Like, yeah. You're burnt. terrible, little finger. I'm fucking going to get yeah. railed. How dare you? Terrible husband. And uh, they just go into the older brother's room. And they and just they, they, oh, they are dancing they dance. and, and even the sister who is not she's like the more I'm in college. I'm trying to be an architect. Yeah, she joins in. Right. She grabs a hit of the sig. She's they pull her up and dance. And it's so even in this house, there's like these two storm systems colliding. Mm -hmm. And this is something he says at the start, because this all kind of starts with the top of the pops. Right. You see the Duran Duran video. Yeah. And I love what the brother said is he's like, it's this perfect mesh of visual and song and it it means so much to them and he's arguing with you know little finger is dead and he just goes what kind of tyranny could stand up to this and it's just this fucking dumbass duran duran video dude which to us now is laughable and we're like look at this fucking but in that whatever. moment but no what he's saying is is totally true is when you're at yes. that age no matter because we all have like the bands we listened to back then that are like oh god that was not my best face but to us Nothing can stand up to that, right? Like, that's why you keep going. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, I, I love that that line, right? What tyranny could stand what up to this? And stand you up. watch yeah, that totally. the rest of the movie, right? Whether it's his parents or bullies or that fucking, fucking priest. priest dude. dude, what the fuck? I would have just I beat the shit out of him. <laughs> yeah, right. That dude, that dude is like laying students out. Even at the, when that one student goes all fucking madman and smashes the light smashes the light. Runs punches up the and guy in the face. punches him right in the nose <laughs> like that priest has been fucking kids up for yeah. decades you know with his fist with his fist that's all i'm implying but uh Who knows? you know but i love that because the priest is an interesting example too because it's another of these societal fall in line fucking mm -hmm. fall in line and you're looking around you're like this is like not a great place right like why wouldn't i live my life and do what i want no, you fucking wear black shoes. I don't care if your family can afford them. You know, wipe your fucking makeup off. Yeah. And Connor's just like, no, this is my thing. Like, I'm trying shit. And when he fucking forces him down into that sink and washes it off and starts just laying into him, right, with all these mm -hmm. kind of accusations of how less than he is because he just wanted to wear makeup and have his hair dyed. And you see, it's one of the really brutal moments. You see Connor sink to the floor and kind of cry a little. Yeah. But when he goes out, right, he's so wet and sad. She's waiting on him, yeah. right? Rafina's standing there with a smile on her face to talk to him about their art. And it yeah. was, I mean, that's that little beat was so great. Is that, yeah, that priest can do whatever the fuck he wants. Because you've got him for a couple hours a day. Yeah. And then he's going out to you know make the his world a better place with rafina so fuck you yeah it's i mean yeah like that's what it is like music becomes this awesome escape and it's not just music it's making these music videos these stories with their music videos like i think that's the other thing too that i loved is he's building these music video stories while he's also writing the songs like and i like that like i i had the Rob Parr has been on the show. Rob was my Eamon. Like we had, we went, this is, I, I would go over to his house. We'd sit in his room and we'd listen to music and play guitar and write songs. But then we'd also talk about them and be like, well, what does that even mean though? Like, why is it this? <laughs> like, why is that the lyric? Why yeah. is that the line? Why is that the chord? Like those kinds of things. Like I love when people challenge him, 
like when they're at the um when they're at the beach shooting that other music video and she just fucking jumps in the water like oh man what a oh moment my God. yeah that is just <laughs> like one of those things you're like ooh, god that one, like, yeah that one's lovely too because that whole segment is really phenomenal right i love yeah. the him dancing on the train and then just kind of like those small moments of him watching and being like, fuck yeah, man, my life is great. Yeah. But I love that she she jumps in. She goes, keep filming. Save me. I can't swim. And she looks at him. She's like, Cosmo, this is our art, our art. She's like, you can never yes. do anything by half. And I love that. But it, what the movie always does, it always has its finger in the real world. When he kisses her and she's like, fair play. And he goes, what about that guy? She's like, you fucking ruined you it. Fucking ruined it. And I, it's a great lesson in the movie where he's all of a sudden like, oh, shit. And by the way, actually, because <laughs> it's it's not all magic all the time. You have well, to fight well, yeah. to maintain that magic. Because then on the train ride back, she brings up very subtly that basically her dad rapes her. Yeah, but she has a like she has a brutal backstory. But, yeah, I mean she has a whole yeah she has a very horrible. I didn't even backstory. pick up that it was like an assault or whatever. Oh, I thought I he was see. just an alcohol. Oh, that's because he says I loved you too much. Well, I loved you too much. Is like I don't know why he loves me anyways. My mom's much prettier, and I'm like, mm. like Andre and I were like, is that what I think it means? You know what's crazy? That kind of washed right past me, dude. It hit me like a ton of bricks. Jesus like I was Christ. just like, it, oh, my I remember God. thinking in my mind like. I get that. I also love my kids too much. I did not put that together in the proper context. Jesus Maybe I don't H. love my kid enough. Jeez. I think it's the right amount. I think I'm like, I hope, that. I hope I it's the right the amount. It's certainly right? not like, Rafina's dad right. amount. Good um, Lord. Yeah. I didn't even think of that. That's yeah. fucking brutal. But like, that's the kind of stuff that I love about this movie is like, there's always this like subtle little, the real world nod is very specific because like, we're never outside of Connor's purview. We're like the whole movie is through Connor's Connor's lens. So like for me, the entire time I'm rooting for Connor, but I'm also rooting for him to address the fact that like there are things going on in the world, but that's cause I'm old. So I sit there. I'm like, you gotta, you gotta address the fact that like your parents are going to break up and well, your brother is like this weird <laughs> stoner. And like this girl thing, clearly yeah. has some heavy issues, but like <laughs> it's so not what that's, but that's supposed to be about. Cause really what it is, is about, what this band is, is not just escape, but it's release. Well, it's hard when you're an older viewer watching it. Yes. Because you just know whatever the worst outcome is, that's how it's going to go. You know the brother's not coming to play that solo. No. You know that she's not going to make it Saturday after that look in the boat. Right? You you kind of know when the movie ends, it's not going to go well. You know that Barry's dad's an alcoholic who abuses him. Right. Like you just you always know it's going to probably end the worst way. But again, this this gets back to that when she says you ruined it, it. It's that reminder that Robin Williams had a quote that I always adored. Right. And he's like, you only have uh, one spark of madness and you have to protect it at all costs. Right. I think that's paraphrasing, but it's it's a brilliant way to look at it is that you don't want to end up as that fucking priest. Yeah. Or those fucking parents and. That's where most of us get shuttled to. So you know who you want to end up like is Eamon's mom who loves. <laughs> Who's just like, I love you, honey. And goes upstairs with the vibrator. <laughs> I love you. Let me grab the vibrator, go upstairs. But, and yeah, like, and, but like, that was also like, that was kind of, my mom was like that. Like my, both my parents were really supportive of me being in bands, but like, I, Oh, that's like, not what I thought you were talking about. But like, no, <laughs> gross. Um, ew. <laughs> oh, I hate you. But like, they listen to my music they danced around like they would dance like I, we had you know ba like we had songs that my parents would actually like dance to or jump around to like that's the kind of stuff that like oh that is what like actually my dad has this story where they dropped me off at ball state my freshman year they dropped me off and it was you know my parents were about to move out actually to la the week after so like they were not going to see me for a very long time and um they got back in the car extra batteries <laughs> And uh, gross. We got back in the car <laughs> and um, my dad had my dad like had a six CD changer and one of the band, one of my band's records started playing and my dad turned it off. He's like, I can't do that right now. But like, that's uh, your that, parents like, are sweet and emotional, though. 
Right, but that's what I say. Like that's Eamon's mom. <laughs> Eamon, Eamon's mom is sweet and emotional. She's like, you know, she I love wants... that scene when she dances in with refreshments. Love it. That's yeah, very much that. how my mom was too. Like yeah, my exactly. mom was always, uh, yeah. It's there's it's, some good there's yeah. some good nods to like oh I also had a person like that in my life. But it's like I think that's what we do right because again you said it best is that the movie's always through Connor's purview. Mm -hmm. And you want him to win. But more than that, you want all these kids to have it better. Yeah. Every kid you see in the movie, you're like, fuck, I wish it was better for them. Mm -hmm. And you just know it's not. And Connor feels like the outlier in the movie. Like You're like, he might be the kid, right? He's a lot probably of us the have that. I'm out. the kid that left the small town, right? And the the thought of that, and it's it's hard because you're watching it again as an adult. You You have this fatalistic thing, but the movie refuses to bow. And no matter how bad it gets, the movie refuses to just become the sad grown up tale that we want it. Right. Yes. The moment in the movie that I think just absolutely slammed home so well for me was the the music video in his mind. Right. The drive it like you stole. Oh, it. yeah. But so this is after everything's gone down. Divorce. His brother screams at him. Right. And his brother's like, I was a fucking jet engine. You came through untouched in the path I macheted for you because he's trying not to smoke box. He's like, I'm sick of being a fucking loser. And I was like, fuck, I relate to this guy. Yes. Plus, that guy talks in podcasts. So I was like, that is very yeah. hitting me in the feels today. <laughs> but So all this shit has happened. Right. And she's not showing up. And the grown ups like, dude, you got an hour. Get something done. And he tells the kids to dance like an American high school with hair gel and whatever. And it's kind of clunky, but seamlessly as the camera whips around. We're in this beautiful 1950 set. They all have their back to the future gear. And the song is drive it. Oh, like banger. you stole it is like one of my all time oh, favorite banger. movie songs. It's fucking. And the lyrics are spot on, but he sees his parents happily dancing. Mm -hmm. He sees his brother right in like the coolest motherfucker on earth. The way he sees him. Oh man. See, I'm going to get choked up, but that's the way he sees him, man. And that, that beat. And then Rafina does come in. And but she's not there when it's over no. and that that bit of cutting between the kind of sad, small reality of what they're doing and the grandiose, beautiful, because, again, that's him taking full authorship of his world. If he yeah. could write the world like his songs, this is what it'd be like. And then at the end, we kind of cut back and she's still not there. And it's just the kids are chuckling and it's over, man. And he's yeah. back in the real and that. That one scene and segment perfectly captures why so many of us were in bands and why we had these big lofty goals and shit, dude. And it, that's it just, exactly it, what it was. Yeah, it's it's, but it's awesome because then it we is. go through this kind of rough patch that you hate to see with these guys, right? Like I hated when Rafina left him. Yeah, and one of the saddest moments of the movie comes right after that when he sees Rafina again. He's like, "What the fuck?" Oh yeah. And she just goes, nope, it's not me. I'm her twin sister. Like she, even being caught is like trying to run and she's got a, a, you know, swollen cheek and this guy lied to her to get a ride, as she says. And even Connor walks out on her in that moment. But she has a line in there. But again, coming off that fucking drive it like you stole it scene where she's like, I guess I'll work at McDonald's now. He's right. I can't be a model. And she's like, would you still love me? If I was asking, do you want chips with that? And he just said, yeah, if you're happy. And I don't know, man. It's it's just beautiful, man. <laughs> like the amount of heart this movie it crams is. in is is just a joy. Yeah. I mean, that the dream sequence for Drive It Like You Stole It on is just like there's just so much there's so much going on. Like there's yeah. just this really yeah, when the brother shows up in the dream is like, I fucking, oh, I fucking lost it, dude. I know, man. I, I thought it was cool too, man. <laughs> I legitimately like it's one of those beats in a movie where like I it just like hits you like a two by four. Like I was not expecting. I wasn't expecting that. Like and he just rolls in like that's the kind of thing like. For all the shit that you go through with your siblings and everything like that, like one of you is like fucking leader of the pack guy like that was like really good but like that scene where he's and on he the smacks bench. up the guy because no woman can truly love a man who listens to phil Collins. 
<laughs> which my wife always laughs at that line because I had a hard, hard Phil Collins face. The tracks. Yeah, very I, into Phil Collins. There was, but the scene where, so he goes off and writes, after he talks to her, he goes off and writes that song, that slow song. Like, that's, again, like, there's something so real. Like, I felt that moment, man. Like, I felt like writing those things, like, when you write those kinds of things about, and it's directed at that certain person, it's, I wrote a song about, like, my high school girlfriend. I wrote a song about my high school girlfriend, and we recorded it. And I, like, sat in her car with her, and I'm like, you have to listen to this. Like, Oh, my God. You're like an emotional terrorist. Hindsight, horrible. <laughs> like, it was a horrible thing to do. But I was like, I want you to hear this because I, I, I was like, I love you, and I want you to hear this, and this is, like, how I feel about you right now. And, like, I mean, it was a horrible song. But, like, yeah. either way, like, that moment, <laughs> again, I'm, like, choked up thinking about, like, that moment doing that. And watching them that wa- watching him write that song, and then like him at the show, like like all right, this is a slow one. I was like, "Fuck off." We know like, it's great. It's because he asked the band, and the, they're like, "We're not fucking playing it. They'll hate us." And Eamon says it's Eamon's a bold a move, bold move. And you know right there that they're gonna go for they're it. They're gonna do it. And like, also, that's... you notice the ladies weren't leaving. No, they Kids were are not. smart. Kids are fucking smart. Yeah, Seems I wrote a song for Amy. It was like, scores are black! <laughs> Actually, Amy still has in her, she still has her old Hotmail account, the first email she ever made. And it's so embarrassing when I have to tell people, like for our utility companies to email, well, I won't say her email address out loud, but it has. I know, uh, I know what it is, and it's amazing. It's embarrassing, right? It's My wife it's should be ashamed. She should do better. But <laughs> in there, she has email poetry I used to write her every day. I would like email her. But it's that's what I mean, man. That's we're all what it is, man. We're happy like, it's, optimists back it's then. Long young love. It's optimism, yeah. and it's like in the face yeah. of everything. But that song too, because that song is one of those. You're like the rest of them are kind of cheeky, fun, yeah, stealing from a like genre. Real. That's the one that's not plucked from kind of an eighty genre, right? No, that's, that's just real. a straight up that's ballad. ballad. And it's what she said earlier. She's like, you know, your problem, Cosmo, is that you don't like being yourself. So how can you, that's what love is. How can you write a love song? And that's the moment when he sings, because that's the thing too, juxtapose that, right? Him up on that stage singing to her like that is the crowds calling him all kinds of horrible names and booing yeah, him. Right? That we will not repeat here. And he's up there being a fucking rock star in his own little way. So the kid who was hunched over walking into that school fucking owns it now. Mm-hmm. And he's in. And that song is the, proof point in the movie that whatever he's been doing this journey we're on beyond just loving her right said you know i don't believe in destiny or whatever right uh he lo- he fell in love with himself which is something i think so many of us have a really hard time doing and so it's this this love song that works across multiple layers well and it's awesome it- this whole thing, yeah, like he gets the girl. He like it's what music you hope music's gonna do for you is he gets the girl, and this all leads us to like the part that I just like, like my wife and I were like our kid was sleeping in the living room while we were watching this. And we're both just like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> where same dude, like so the brother he asked the brothers like, can you drive us out to the boat? And yeah. his brother's like, yeah, and I mean it's this really emotional beat because after you see like after his jet but engine speech, but it's which better is awesome. than that. Yeah. Cause this comes after they say, this is our first and last gig. He's like, the band will be fine. Why don't you take, like we've had this talk and for her to show up and hit like they, they actually laughed the priest out of there. The fucking abusive priest gets laughed yeah. out. They fucking won. And for him in that moment, after everything to still grab her hand and say, let's fucking go for it is the thing I think all of us have had these moments in our life. And I would wager that most of us didn't fucking run for the boat. His brother no. didn't run for the boat, right? His brother didn't run for the boat. But, but when his he brother... comes into his brother, who's now like just kind of sitting there looking at him, and he's like, do you have any money? Do you know any friends? Like, nope, nope. Like, we have a guitar and portfolio of pictures. And he's like, let's go. And he just like rushes in because it's, it's his whole philosophy made yeah. person, right? So even if he didn't make it to Germany or whatever, oh man, again he macheted a path that, for them. He's pouring all of it into his brother. Like that's like the thing, like for brothers everywhere. Like that's the reason the tags there. It's like when 
you love someone and you clearly know like they're better than me. Like it's not even yeah. like a matter of like, oh, I'm not ever going to make it or anything like that. Like when you love someone and see their talent and you want them to prosper in a way that you never could. Yeah. You pour all your hope and dreams and love into that person and set them free. Like that is. Yeah. I mean, again, like <laughs> I'm not a great brother, but I mean, man, if there's no, you're any pretty, person, you're pretty to, rough. If, <laughs> <laughs> There's any brother to aspire to be, it's Jack Trainer in Sing Street. Yeah, and it's after all of his spiels and the you know the lessons, and he becomes the safe harbor in this storm. But yeah, like I remember, my, I have a younger brother who's much younger than me. But my whole life, when I saw that kid, you're like, "There's a fucking twinkle on him, right?" Like I see him the way like Aladdin sees Jasmine in a Disney movie, right? Where you're like, "He's magic to me, man." Everything that kid does, every step he takes, everything he ever did. I remember at his senior dance, he got like an award thing for uh, like being in a like the band or the singing group, you know, Men of Virginity, whatever it was called. <laughs> He'll like that one if he ever hears it. Just kidding. Yep. He doesn't support my art and listen to the show. But <laughs> <laughs> but he was in this thing. And I remember sitting there watching him sing to this like group of us in this small town cafeteria and just being like, I fucking told everyone I knew it. And so, like, yeah, it's it's the most amazing. And now you have a kid. You have a kid, right? Like, you see it in them every day. Yeah. Like, you just look at your kids and you're like, oh, my God, they're going to be the best thing that ever hit this world. But see, that that moment plays out slow burn, too, because they start kind of like, all right, call me when you get there. Bye bye. It doesn't land oh, until he man. sees the boat kind of crest over into the real ocean. And he just and he cheers. He fucking. Yeah. Che- yes. And his smile in that car. Right. Oh. That was everything, man. That's yeah. the fucking movie because that's all of that's us, the movie right? Right there, the people who might talk a good game or have big aspirations, but just haven't quite made the leap yet. Watching someone make the leap, and what I love too is this movie doesn't have a battle of the bands element. No, there's no fighting There's over no the girl, inner really. fight, infighting in the band. It's it's just the, it's, it's a brothers. it's a movie where people in hard times are just genuinely happy and supportive of anyone else being a little happier. Right. So that moment mixed with them bringing um, the little buzz haired kid, the bully into the band. I thought that was like a surprisingly poignant movie or movie moment too. Cause the way to really play that is to laugh him out of their gig right after he does that. But he only have the the power to destroy. It's the law. The law is the bully. But he's just the kid who got smacked, right? When they're like, his dad fucking just slaps the shit out of him in that alley. Yeah. And they 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 see that in others. So there's such a, we all, all you know, the, the rising tide can raise all boats in this movie. Mm-hmm. It's fucking lovely. But him cheering him going on that boat is just the perfect image for this movie, right? Because again, they're taking this little dinky boat into a storm into the ocean into the dark the misty you can't see the mainland today or the boat that you're imminently about to crash into (laughs) and so the movie's telling us like again i it's like logically based on the news footage and every other adult character we've seen probably not gonna go well right like he'll have to pawn his guitar within a day someone's gonna steal their boat you know they'll be turning tricks in a week something like that right but we don't know that because as they go into the storm they're riding alongside this boat of other people. They're just sailing towards hope into the unknown. And right. that's all it takes for that big fucking smile, man. And we we all fucking cheer and rejoice when the credits come up. Oh, they had that title card, too, that killed me for all for, or brothers, for brothers everywhere. everywhere. But that's what I, I mean. It's, it's just rare that a movie can just be so earnest and capture because I feel like what happens for a lot of us, and especially a lot of indie movies, it's so easy to devolve into the, it's a, the cynical. It's easy to go to cliche. Cliche, but even cynical, right? Where it's just like a lot of these movies would end on that. The band's not going to make it, you know, blah, blah, blah. And this movie acknowledges the fact that all the cynical stuff could be true, but that that doesn't fucking matter because the song Drive It Like You Stole It usually ends with you going to jail yes but you have that one fucking ride that one moment where you're above everything else you shake the dust off and that's what i i love that this movie just captures that it doesn't matter where they end it matters that they fucking are fighting it only matters that we fight and again when i turn this movie off 
I was just crying, just looking out the window. And you're just like, there's a whole fucking place out there, man. And I just wanted to be a part of it. Like I felt like Ariel. I was like, I want to be where the sing streets are. <laughs> you know, it's like, I want to, I want to see him dance. I want to see him walking. And then my dad's like, fuck you and your trinkets. <laughs> no, that's a different movie. But yeah, I, I wanted to go outside and just be a part of the world, which is not my normal state of mind. But you you feel like you're fucking cheering an arena show with this yes. movie. I mean, it's it's just like pure magic to me, this movie. It's it's perfect, man. Honestly, like you don't find movies like this very often. And when they come around, especially a subject to do that's as difficult as honestly music which i think is a very difficult thing to put on on camera very difficult thing to make into a feasible film it's this is just earnest is the word i keep coming back to just it yeah. feels but real. it's like they said at top of the pops right it becomes this perfect blend of music and image and what tyranny could stand up to this movie Agreed. this is the movie if you're feeling down or it's hopeless or why should i try harder this and again, I you know, I think a lot of people struggle with depression and this and that. And one of the worst things is when people like just be happier and better. You're like, thanks, fuck face. I never thought about just being happier. But this is one of those like, hey man, I'm not gonna say anything. Just watch the movie and realize that, you know, even on the shittiest day, this is the line of the movie. I'll tell you the line. The one time he goes to Eamon's house and he knocks on the door and he's just like, you know, hey, you want to help me write a song? And Eamon says, always always that's the fucking that's your movie. fucking guy right there Woo! that's what this movie captures. that's the me, movie man. do you want to keep trying always i don't know man. i mean i don't know if we said anything interesting or insightful or we're just like awesome like that chris farley like remember that part in this movie that was awesome but that's how this movie we makes warned me you feel. all ahead of the time ahead of time we are going <laughs> to gush there's nothing wrong with this movie we're going to gush about it the entire time it just makes me happy to be a part of the human race and it makes me excited to watch and hear and listen to art and just hope that people have awesome lives man agreed that's it for sing street uh we are going to be in a lot of bands this month so stay tuned we have some amazing guests on the way uh so again stay tuned for that make sure you rate and review the show wherever you find us especially apple podcast app fuck them algorithmic overlords that's how we fight them Go to YouTube, subscribe to the channel, Film Alchemist. Email the show, filmalchemistpod at gmail.com. Find us on all the socials you're on. Get a hold of us. We love talking to you. Uh, More than anything, thanks for the time. Come back next week. For the Film Alchemist, I'm Josh Griffey. I am Alex Tandino.